hey everyone welcome back to our channel milestone creator in this video i will share with you the top 10 most important scenario based power bi interview questions that was asked by the deloitte interviewer during the interview process of power bi developer job role okay and let me tell you this questions was provided to me by one of my friend who is currently working at dcs and recently he has appeared the interview process for Power BI developer job role at Deloitte. That's why I thought of creating a video on this so that everyone can get aware of these scenario based questions and they will get ready for their upcoming Power BI interview. Okay, and let me tell you another thing this video is the combination of all the above 10 scenario based Power BI interview questions that I have been uploaded before in this playlist. So previously, if you have already watched that videos, then you can ignore this one. Okay, so let's discuss those top 10 questions along with answers one by one. But before that, if you are new to this channel, then do subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the upcoming useful videos. So let's discuss the questions along with answers one by one. So the question, the question is, is that, that there is a product table with lot of columns okay and the requirement is to write a text query to create a new table called as new product okay which will give the table with three columns with three different conditions okay and these are the three conditions of three different columns so first is product id it should be less than or equal to 100 okay then the next column name is product name and it should be start from s only okay and next is product price and the product price should be greater than or equal to 500 okay so in short if i will explain the entire thing so suppose we have a table called as the product table okay and in this product table we have so many different numbers of column but the requirement is that out of that so many numbers of column we have to extract only three column and those three columns are product id product name and product price okay but the condition is that product id should be less than or equal to 100 then next is product name it should be start from s letter only okay and the third column is product price and the condition is that price should be greater than or equal to 500 of that particular column okay so let's see how we can solve this problem so first of all let me show you one table this is the table okay and the name of the table is product table and inside this table we have so many different columns are there like product id product name color quantity and price okay so we are going to import this table into the power bi environment first all right so let me close this then go to the power bi desktop environment and over there just go to the home tab and here we have options called get data click on it click on excel workbook then go to the desktop and here this is the product table then click on open then select the table name that is product table then click on load and here you can see we have successfully imported the table that is called as the product table and inside this table we have like five columns right color product id price product name and quantity got it then let me go to the page 3 okay it's a blank page all right so quickly let me create one table visual okay by keeping all these columns in this table so that it will be easy to uh, compare okay all right so first is product id then product name then quantity then color then price okay all right so this is the table visual that we have all right and why the count of product id is coming like this so we have to remove the count as don't summarize so let me do some formatting okay so now the output is looking like this okay so this is a simple table which contain five column there is product id product name quantity color and sum of price okay so now our requirement is we have to create a new table which will extract from this table right so what is the requirement let me paste that okay so this is the requirement right we have to create a new table from this existing table it means from the product table and the new table name should be new product correct and the next is this new product table contain only three columns that is product id product name and sum of price or we can say price column right 
and these are the conditions correct so for that first of all we have to go to this table view okay because the output uh, should be a table right so we have to create a new table and that new table should contain only three column that is product id product name and price column right by following these three conditions correct so that's why to create a new table first of all you have to go to this table view then here we have to click on this new table to create a new table okay and here we have to write the dex query that is first of all here we have to enter the name of the new table that is new product okay equal to first of all we have to write a dex functions that is calculate table because we are going to create a table right calculated table and inside this we have to pass a new dex functions that is summarize columns okay and inside this bucket we have to enter the column name that we need from this product table okay so first we need is product id here you can see this is the product id product name and summarize price this is the output right so first is product id right so here we have to enter product id so this is the product id from product table okay then comma then next is product name okay so product name here it is click enter then give the comma next is price right so you can enter product table price got it these are the three columns that we need in the output correct then close the bracket okay then give the comma all right then just expand this and now here we have to write the condition for these three columns right so the first condition is product id this is the product id right so product id should less than 500 or equal to 100 right so first here we have to write product id okay product id product id it should be less than or equal to 100 right so here it we will give the symbol like less than equal to 100 okay then comma the next conditions is product price right so product price should be greater than or equal to 500 so product price should be greater than or equal to 500 okay then the next conditions for the product name is product name should be start with s right so for that we can write a text function that is search okay and we can pass the value s okay and this should be searched from this from this product name column and it if it will become as s then the output should be one otherwise it should be blank okay then close the bracket and again close the bracket then click enter okay and now here you can see in the below part you can see the new table okay and whatever conditions we have applied that are showing over here and here you can see this is the output right so uh, it contain only three column as per our requirement product id product name and price right and these three columns are following all the conditions whatever we have applied like product id should be less than or equal to 100 here you can see all this value are less than or equal to 100 right then next is product price should be greater than or equal to 500 here you can see all the value are greater than or equal to 500 right and the next is product name product name should be start with s right and here all the value are starting from s correct then go to this report view and here you can see we have successfully created a new table that is new product correct and it contain only three columns that is as per the requirement product id product name and price here it is product id product name and price right and all these conditions are following on this so to check that just again create a new table okay and inside this pass this three value that is product id product name and price got it and then just click on this first table and copy the formatting from here and paste it on this second table okay so this is the final output got it but still here you can see the value are 111 so again we have to click here and here we have the column colors of product id just right click on it and click on don't summarize and this is the final output right so as per the requirement we have created a new table and the name of the new table is new product okay and it contain only three column that is product id product name and price and product id's value are less than or equal to 100 okay and product name should start with s only and product price is greater than or equal to 500 so this table is following all the conditions whatever that has been given by the interviewer right so the question is that here you can see I have already imported one table called as the orders table into Power BI desktop environment. Okay, 
and in this table we have so many different numbers of columns are there all right and based on this data set i have created three different charts okay those are sum of sales by category sum of profit by category and sum of discount by category all right these are the three different charts so here whenever i am clicking on this particular bar or any bar from this chart okay so at that time other two charts are also get filtered based on this selections right here you can see when i am clicking on this office suppliers at that time the entire two different charts are showing the data based on this selections right whenever i am going to select the technology these two charts are also filtering their data as per this selections right but the question is that i don't want this it means whenever i will click on this particular bar of this chart at that time these two charts should not be filtered based on this selections okay got my point so how can i do that so the answer is that first of all this is called as the interaction between the charts it means whenever i will click on any particular bar or any particular elements on one chart then other chart are also get filtered based on that right this is called as the interaction between the charts or we can say this is the by default responsive nature of power bi right so how can i stop that for that first of all you have to click any particular chart based on which you don't want to filter other two charts so suppose whenever i will click on this bar of this particular chart then the interaction should not be happen with these two charts okay so for that first of all you have to select on this then go to format and inside this format we have a options call as the edit interactions okay so just click on this edit interactions all right then here you can see we have one different type of icons are there in these two charts right so now what can i do i have to stop the responsiveness of this two chart right so for that you have to click on this icon so now you can see we have already disable the responsiveness of this chart with this right same way you have to click on this also okay so now whenever i will click on this particular bar these two charts are not filtering their data based on this selections right so in this way we can stop our interactions between charts correct and now again if i don't want to stop the interactions between the charts then what you have to do again you have to click on this chart then you have to go to the format then click on edit interactions okay and you have to click on this filter icon okay to remove this as non all right so you have to click on this all right so now here you can see the color of this icon has changed to white right so whenever i will click on this particular bar this charts also filtering the data as per that right but this chart is not filtering his data as per that because here the color of this icon is black right so to stop that you have to click on this particular filter icon all right so now whenever again i will click on this then these two charts are also now filtering their data as per the selections all right so this is one of the most important scenario based power bi interview questions okay so the question is that here you can see we have created three different pages one is sales by year okay another is profit by year and next is discount by year okay and in all three pages we have created one column chart okay and along with this column chart we have created one slicer where we have taken the region okay and if i will click on this particular column chart here you can see in the x axis we have taken the year column and in the y axis we have taken the sum of cells same way if i will click on this profit by year and this is the column chart and if i will click here you can see in the x axis we have taken the year and in the y axis we have taken the profit okay and if i will click on this particular page and if i will click on this then here you can see in the x axis we have taken the year in in the y axis we have taken the sum of discount okay and the common thing is that in all three pages we have taken this particular region slicer okay in the profit by year also we have taken the slicer as the region and in the sales by year page also we have taken the slicer as the region all right 
so now the requirement is that if I will select on any particular value of this particular slicer that should impact on these two pages as well okay let me show you first suppose if I will select on west region here okay then this chart is showing the data as per the west region correct now if I will go to this profit by here here you can see the west region has been automatically selected and this particular chart is showing the data as per the west right same way if i will go to the discount by here here you can see the west region has been automatically selected and this chart is showing as per the west region right suppose again by staying in this particular page discount by here i am selecting the east region okay here the chart is showing the data as per the east region right again if i will go to the profit by year here you can see the west region has been automatically selected and this is showing the data as per the east right same way if i will click on this sum of cells by year here also in, in the slicer part you can see the east region has been automatically selected and this chart is showing the data as per the east region right so in short, the requirement is that if I am selecting any particular value of this slicer that should impact on all visual which is available in this profit by year and which is available in the discount by year pages as well. Okay, it means we do not need to go to all pages and every time we have to select the same East region on all different pages. It means if I will select on any particular value of this region slicer by staying in the cells by year page that should impact on all different pages as well. It means all the visuals which is available in the profit by year and discount by year should be shown the data as per the East region. Okay, so how you can achieve that that is the requirement. All right. So let's see how we can do this. So by default, when you are creating the visuals on one pages along with this slicer visual on this particular page, okay, and you will select on this particular, suppose I'm selecting the West region. So now it is showing the data as per the West, but if I will go to this profit by year pages or discount by year pages here, the West region has not been selected automatically. Okay, it means this slicer is impacting only for this particular page right that is for sales by year it is not impacting on profit by year pages and discount by year page correct so our requirement is that this slicer should impact on all different pages as well right so for that first of all you have to select any particular page where this slicer is present okay so i'm selecting the sales by year and then you have to select on this particular slicer okay and after that here we have your options called as the view tab right so just click on this view tab and in the right hand side you can see a options called as the sync slicer okay so just click on this sync slicer then here you can see this type of window over here okay and here you can see sync slicer is basically used to add and sync with all pages or selecting specific pages okay for this reason we use this sync slicer okay so now we want this slicer should impact or this slicer should synchronize with all different pages as well okay so here we have three different pages and here you can see these three different pages are showing over here sales by year profit by year and discount by year okay and here we have two different columns one is this is a synchronization tab and this is the view tab okay so if you will go to all three pages by default mode this slicer is showing right that's why here all the buttons are showing clicked okay if i will deselect these two okay and if i will go to this profit by year page here you are not able to see that slicer here also you are not able to see the slicer right again go to this sales by year then click on this slicer and click on this sync slicer okay so why it is not visible in all pages because we have disabled the view options from here in sync slicer right then if you want to remove this same slicer from different pages you can untick these things okay so now for uh, understanding purpose i am enabling these two slicer in two different pages as well okay apart from this this is the main concept that is sync slicer right so this slicer whatever select slicer that we have selected will impact all the visual switches available in the sales by year page it will not impact on all pages now okay but our requirement is that it should impact on all pages right it means this slicer should synchronize with all pages now to synchronize this slicer with all different pages what you have to do 
you have to enable this synchronize slicer on all different pages okay it means in profit by year pages and discount by year pages that's why we have selected all the two checkbox okay suppose we have a new pages okay and in that phase i don't want to synchronize this slicer so at that time you have to deselect that but now our requirement is that this slicer should impact on two different pages these two different pages right that's why i have enabled these two buttons here okay then just close this and click on this west region then go to the profit by year tab or we can say page and here you can see the west region has been automatically selected why it is happening because this particular slicer is now synchronized with this slicer on profit by year and with this slicer that is discount by year that's why whenever we are selecting on any particular value of this slicer that is impacting on all different pages okay so in short how we can achieve the requirement that is done by the help of this sync slicer okay or you can say this synchronized slicer all right so the question is that there are two slices and five visuals in a particular page of the power bi report okay and when i am clicking on the first slicer other visuals are getting filtered okay but when i am clicking on the second slicer the other visuals are not filtering can you tell me what are the most important five reasons that might be due to which the second slicer is not affecting to the other five visuals this is the question okay so let's see what are the top five reasons that may be due to which the second slicer is not affecting to other five visuals so if we will go for the answer part then it might be there are so many different reasons are there due to which the second slicer is not affecting to the other visual of that particular page okay but if we will consider only the top five one then in the first point we can consider this is happening due to the relationship in the data model it means there must be a valid relationship between the field that is used in the second slicer and the field in the visual you expect to be filtered okay and remember one thing in power bi relationship between the tables play a crucial role in filtering data okay in the power bi report so it might be the first reason due to which the second slicer is not working properly okay then considering into the second point it might be due to the inappropriate configurations of the slicer okay it means you have to make sure that the configurations of the second slicer must be set up correctly and you have to ensure that the slicer is bound to the appropriate field all right if it will not appropriate to the proper field then the slicer will definitely not work okay this is the second reason due to which that might be the second slicer is not working then moving into the third point it might be due to the cross filter directions it means depending on the nature of your data you may need to set the cross filter directions to both or single to control how the filtering across between the tables okay if you will not set the directions correctly then the data will not flow properly okay that's why you have to make sure that the directions has been given appropriately okay so this might be the third case due to which the filter is not working properly then the next possible scenario due to which this is happening is filters in visual interaction okay it means if the edit interactions of that particular slicer is closed for all other five visuals then definitely that slicer will not affect to other five visuals okay so you have to make sure that in the format tab the edit interactions of that particular slicer is not closed for all other visuals of that particular page okay if it is closed then the slicer will not affect to other visuals so you have to check this edit interaction part as well all right then the next reason due to which this might be happening is data cardinality okay it means if there is many to many relationship it might be required additional consideration or adjustment 
So you have to ensure that the data model cardinality is appropriate for all type of relationship you want to establish. All right. So these are the five different most important reasons that might be due to which the slicer, it means the second slicer are not affecting to the all other visuals of that particular page. Okay. So before moving into the questions, let me show you the data set. Okay. The name of the data set is sales data. And inside this sales data, we have three columns. One is date column. Second is state column and third is sales column. Okay, so based on these three columns, we have to calculate the top five state based on the sales amount along with five recent quarterly data. Okay, so the output should be look like this. Let me show you. Okay, here is the output. So here you can see these are the top five state based on sales amount along with five recent quarterly data okay so today is 16th november 2023 okay so this come under quarter four all right so here you can see this is a quarter four data of 2023 for california same way this is for 2023 quarter three data this is for quarter two and this is for quarter one of 2023 and this is the quarter four of 2022 okay so these are the five recent quarterly data for california right same way we have segregated this column based on the quarterly cells okay of this state all right so how you can do this this is the requirement got it so let's see how we can do this so as you can see here i have already imported one table that is called as a cells table and if i will expand that inside this we have three columns one is date cells and state okay and if you want to see the data then click on this table view and here it is so this contain the date column okay state column and cells column and this date column contain the data from 1st january 2022 to, to 16th november 2023 okay today is the 16th november 2023 okay and this is the state column and this is the cells column all right now let's move to the report view and then here you have to select this cluster column chart first okay so let me select this okay and inside this cluster column chart we will take the year and quarter in the x-axis because we have to show the data on five recent quarterly data correct so i am taking the year column to this y x x-axis okay and along with that i am taking this quarter column as well okay and in the y-axis we will take the sales amount got it okay now it is looking like this okay then the next thing that we have to do is in place of small multiple we have to drag this state column okay and now it will look like this all right and now if i'll scroll down here you can see it contain the cells as for the quarterly and yearly data for the entire state right but our requirement is that we have to show only top five state based on cells right so for that just click on this particular chart okay then expand this filter tab okay and in this filter tab here you can see we have a state column right then just expand this state column okay and then here in place of basic filtering you have to select the top n okay then here you have to enter five okay because our requirement is that we have to find out or we have to calculate the top five state based on cell summer correct so we are taking the top n or we can say top five based on the cells amount so in place of this field we can drag this cells column and we can put it over here okay then click on this apply filter and once the filter is applied here it is showing only top five state okay these are the only top five state based on the cells so now here you can see we have successfully achieved our first requirement that is calculate top five state based on the sales amount these are the top five state okay then our next requirement is that we have to find out top five state based on the sales amount along with five recent quarterly data right 
but now it is showing all quarters data that is quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 to for 2022 and also quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 for 2023 as well okay but our requirement is we have to show only five recent quarterly data it means we need only quarter 4 quarter 3 quarter 2 quarter 1 of 2023 along with quarter 4 of 2022 right so the because these are the five recent quarterly data for each particular state right so how we can do that for that first of all we have to create one new column over here on this particular table okay so right click on it then click on new column all right then just rename it as recent 5 qtr okay equal to here we have to take the dex functions that is date diff all right so the date diff dex functions take three argument one is date one the next is date two and the third argument is the interval okay and the main motive of this date diff dex function is it returns the number of unit between the input date and dates it means it give the number of in units between the date one and date two all right so in place of date one argument i am taking the today okay then give the comma then the next argument is date two so in place of date two i am taking this date column okay so just write down date and scroll down and the below part you can see this is the date of this cells table right so just click enter then give the comma all right then the third argument is the interval so our requirement is we have to find out the five recent quarterly data right so in place of this interval i am taking this quarter okay then close the bracket then click on enter and here you can see we have successfully created one particular new column that is called as the recent five quarter okay then if we'll go to this table view here you can see this is the new column called as the recent five quarter and it contains the data zero to minus seven okay so just click okay then click on this report view then click on this particular chart okay and then drag this particular column to this filters on this visual or we can say filters visual okay so let me drag this and put it over here all right and in place of this recent five quarter here we have to select as advanced filtering okay then in this drop down here we have to select is greater than or equal to we can write it here as minus four why i'm writing minus four because we have to find out the five recent quarter right so i'm writing it here as minus four suppose it will be 10 recent quarter so at that place i can write it here as minus nine okay so uh, our that recent five quarter column also contain the data from zero to minus seven right now right why it contained up to minus seven because we have two years of data and in place of two years of data we can have only eight quarter right that's why it's showing the data from zero to minus seven okay and our requirement is that we have to select the five percent quarter that's why we are selecting here as is greater than or equal to minus four and in place of this drop down we can select is less than or equal to zero all right then click on this apply filter and now here you can see only five quarters data is showing for 2023 and for 2022 right quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four for 2023 and this is the quarter four for 2022 data right then if i want to apply some uh, formatting on this then just click on it then go to this format tab then click on this small multiple then make the row into one okay and in place of this column we can increase this to five okay and now here you can see this is showing the top five state based on the sales amount along with five recent quarterly data okay so this is the output got it so as you can see here this is one table called as the orders table if we'll go to this table view here you can see this order table okay this is the order table and this order table contain three column one is order date 
second is category and next is sales okay so out of these three columns we have to find out category wise last n month sell okay so in place of n we can put as 12 month or 6 month or 5 month whatever that may be okay so the question is that you have to find out the category wise last 12 month sales okay so as you can see here this is the order table and if we'll expand this here we can see the category order date and sales right and if you will further expand this order date inside this we can get the year quarter month and date right <clears throat> so let's see how many years of data this is okay so for that let me select one matrix visual okay and inside this i am passing this year value okay so it contained 2016 17 18 and 19 data it means four years of data are available okay so let me remove this one okay so let's create one table okay this is the table visual and inside this table visual i am taking the category okay this is the category because we have to find out category wise last 12 month cells right so this is the category column okay category wise it will drag this cells column inside this it will give us the total cells as per the category okay but our need is we have to find out the category wise last only 12 month cells all right so how can we do that for that we have to create a measure okay so let's create a new measure so right click on this orders table then click on the new measures okay and here just rename it as last 12 month sales okay equal to here first of all we have to write the dex functions that is calculate okay because we are going to calculate the sum of total cells okay calculate sum of total cells then give the comma okay then we have to use another dex functions that is dates in period okay this is another dex formula okay so this formula returns the dates from the given period okay and it's take the argument as the dates then start date number of intervals and interval okay so we will take date column okay it means the order date is here right so we have to write that order date here so simple write order date okay all right then give the comma the next argument is start date so in place of start date we are taking the max of order date okay so this is the order date column we have to find out the max of that okay then then close the bracket and give the comma okay then third argument is number of interval okay so in place of number of interval we will pass minus 12 okay last 12 month cells it means here in the number of interval it will be minus 12 okay if it will be last six month cells then we can write here as minus six okay but as per the requirement we have to find out the last 12 month cells so here we have to write minus 12 okay then give the comma then the last argument of this dates in period is interval right so in place of interval you have to give the day month quarter or year okay as per your requirement you have to select anyone from here so we have to find out last 12 month cells right so anyhow we are here we have to select the month okay then close the bracket again close the bracket then click enter and here you can see we have successfully created the measure called as the last 12 month cells right so now just select this table view and drag this last 12 month measure inside this okay and here you can see this is the category column this is the sum of cells okay and this is last 12 month cells all right so total cells is 22,97,200.86 but last 12 month cells is 7,33,215.26 okay and this is the segregations of this total cells as per the category okay so in this way we can find out last n month cells from this given data set all right so the question is that whenever you are creating a report using power bi desktop at that time you should definitely work with this data modeling part as well correct so as you can see here this is the table a and this is the table p right and table a contains three columns that is name cell state and amount and table b contain two column that is city and name okay let me show you in this table view so that it will be easy to understand for you 
so as you can see this is the table a okay and it contain three columns that is cell state okay then name and amount all right then this is table b it contain two column that is name and city so in between these two column this name column is common okay so now to create any visualizations or to create any report first of all we have to work with this data modeling it means first of all we have to create the relationship between these two tables correct so as i have already told this name column is common in both the table a and table b right so when i want to create the relationship between table a and table b on the basis of this name column okay at that time facing the problem like many to many relationship occur right this relationship has cardinality many to many this could only be used if it is expected that neither column contain unique value and that the significantly different behavior of many to many relationship okay so here you can see this is a table a and this is a table b and we have selected the name column in both the table to create the relationship but it is showing the warning message okay so if i will click on this ok button at that time it will create a relationship between the table a and table b and that relationship is based on many to many relationship okay here you can see these are the many to many relationship right because both the side it's showing the star value correct and why it is happening many to many because he in this table a the name value is repeated and same way in the table b the name value is also repeated right that's why it is showing many to many relationship between the name columns in between the table a and table b okay so as we all know many to many relationship between the tables in data modeling during creating the power bi report is not good for our convenience right so we have to convert it to one to many or one to one relationship between these two tables right so how can you do that so for that we have to create a intermediate table in between these two table okay and that intermediary table is called as the breeze table okay and that breeze table contain only one column and that is called as the name column okay why it should be named because in this table a and table b we are connecting these two table with the help of this name column right so we need another table intermediary table which should contain only one column that is called as the name okay and that contain only the unique name which is available in both the table all right so let's see how we can do this okay for that first of all you have to go to this report view then click on this modeling tab okay then here you can see options called as the new table right so just click on this new table and then rename it as breeze underscore table okay you can give any name all right then equal to after that here you have to use a dex functions that is distinct okay here you can see this is the distinct dex function and this distinct dex functions take only one argument okay so it returns a one column table that contain the distinct value in a column all right so here we can give the argument as the column name so you can take the help of any table okay to get the distinct value of the name column so here i can write name okay and this is the name column of the table a and this is the name column of the table b so let me take the name column of the table a okay then click enter and close the bracket okay then again click enter and here you can see we have successfully created a new table that is called as the breeze table and if you want to see what data it contains then click on this table view then click on this breeze table and here you can see this is only one column that contain the name okay and these are the distinct value which is available in the name column of the table a and the name column of the table b okay so in this way we can create a breeze table for table a and table b which should contain only one column that is name and it contain only the distinct value which is available in the name column of the table a and the table b okay then again go to this modeling view and here you can see this is the breeze table that we have created right all right and now just click on this particular link okay then right click on it and delete it
then click on yes and remove the relationship between table a and table b okay then just drag the name column of the table a and drop it in the name column of the bridge table all right and here you can see we have successfully created a relationship between the table a and the bridge table with star to one and the key many to one right same way here also again we will drag the name column of the table b and drop it on the name column of the bridge table and here also you can see we have created a many to one relationship between this table b and the bridge table okay so what is the advantages of creating this bridge table in between these two table now we can easily handle many to many relationship problem okay apart from this also we can reduce the complexity of the data model all right and also we can make it easier to query and report on the data it means now we can easily create different charts and visualizations based on these two different tables okay so now let me delete all the relationship between these three tables along with this intermediate table okay and now you can see here we have only two table that is table a and table b right and if we go to this table view here you can see in the table a we have a column called as a name and here the value are on repeated form right correct so instead of creating a new intermediate table in between this table a and table b we can remove all the duplicates value from any one of this table okay but remember before deleting you have to clarify from your client whether you need to delete all the all the duplicates value from this particular table or not okay otherwise it will be a great problem for you so you have to first clarify whether the data of this particular table is important or not okay so for that just go to this uh, report view then go to the transform data okay then here just select the table a okay then click on this name column then right click on it okay then click on remove duplicates okay so currently we have seven records are there right so if i will click on this remove duplicates then automatically duplicate value will be removed and we can have only four rows okay in the table a but in the table b the data is as it is all right so now you will click on this close and apply then let me go to this modeling view okay and now if i will drag the name column from table a and if i will drop it in the name column of the table b it will create one too many relationship right because in the table b the name column contains the duplicate value but in place of table a we have removed the duplicate value from the name column right so here whatever name are available those are only the distinct value right that's where this table a and table b is connected with one to many relationship now and remember i am telling you again and again before implementing this step it means before deleting the duplicate records from any one of this table you have to make sure that if you will delete those records from that table it should not affect on your report okay so you have to make sure on that before you deleting all those records so these are the two methods by the help of which you can handle many to many relationship during creating of your power bi report all right so the question is that whenever you are creating any report in power bi at that time you must have used the functions like if and switch right so so now can you please tell me what is the difference between this if and switch functions okay and out of these two functions if and switch which one is the better as compared to the performance of the power bi report okay so this is the question so how can you give the answer for these questions so here you can see this is the answer the switch functions in power bi provides a conditional way to evaluate an expression against a list of value and it returns a corresponding result expression okay and this is the syntax of the switch functions all right whereas in case of if functions if functions in power bi allow you to evaluate a conditions and it returns a specific value when the condition is true and a different value when the condition is 
false okay so this is the definitions of switch and if function in power bi then let's see what is the difference between this if functions and switch functions okay so the difference is that if else statement uses multiple statement for multiple choice whereas in place of switch statement it use a single expression for multiple choice all right next difference is if else statement evaluate integer character boolean type data type whereas in place of switch it evaluates character and integers value only got it then the next difference is if else statement checks a conditions and it returns the first value as true if it matches with the condition but in place of switch it returns the else value but in the case of the switch statement it returns the different result depending on the value of an expression okay this is the difference between the if and switch functions in power bi got it so now let's understand this if and switch functions by one example all right here you can see this is the if functions and this is the switch functions suppose we have a table called as a product okay and it contain a column called as the list price and the list price column contain the data from 0 to 2000 okay now suppose if you want to use the if functions on that particular column then how can i write that first of all you have to write the if functions okay then give the parenthesis and product list it means the column name if the column name of that product table is less than 500 then it should show low okay and again we can write if the list price column of that product table is less than 1500 then it will come under medium otherwise it will come under high okay so in this way we can write the if functions got it but in place of switch functions we can write simple switch functions and we have to start the parenthesis then we can write the column name of that product table okay if the list price column of the product table is less than 500 then it will come under low if the list price column of the product table come under 1500 then it will come under medium otherwise it will be high okay so you can see the difference of the syntax in if as well as switch right so out of these two if we will compare which one is better as for the performance the if functions is useful for handling one or two conditions but as the number of the conditions increases nesting them becomes necessary and the nesting of the if statement is not only hampers the readability especially with an increased number of conditions but it also reduces the performance okay so in that scenario this is where the switch functions offers a superior approach for expressing multiple conditions okay that's where we can say this switch functions is much much better than the if functions okay so again i am telling selecting of the if functions and the switch functions is completely depends upon the scenario okay so from this scenario based questions you have got the better idea about what is the difference between the if functions and the switch functions and which function we should select on which scenario okay so the question is that what will happen if many to many relationship exist between two tables in power bi during the process of data modeling okay it means during the data modeling process if many to many relationship exist between two tables then what will happen okay this is the question all right so the answer is that in power bi whenever you have a many to many relationship exist between two tables in your data model it can introduce some complexities and challenges or we can say a many to many relationship means that each record in one table can related to multiple record in another table and vice versa all right and remember power bi is designed to handle one to many relationship more effectively i say power bi is designed to handle one to many relationship more effectively one to many okay and it is generally recommended to model your data with one to many relationship whenever it is possible instead of many to many relationship okay so anyway as for the questions 
Let's see if many-to-many -many relationship exists between two tables in Power BI during data modeling, what will happen? It means what are the issues that we will face? So as you can see here, these are the five common issues that we can see if we keep the many-to-many -many relationship between two tables. Okay, so let's see what are those issues are in descriptive form. All right, so the first issue is filtering and slicing issue. It means filtering and slicing data may not behave as expected because of the potential for multiple matches. Okay, this can lead to unexpected result when visualizations data or creating measures. Got it? It means if many to many relationship exist between two tables during data modeling, it will affect when we are doing the visualizations. Okay, or it may affect during creating the measures. Got it? This is the first issue. Next issue that you can face is cross filtering issue. It means in Power BI, relationship automatically enable cross filtering between two tables. With many to many relationship, cross filtering can become more complex and may not provide the desired outcomes. That's why we should always avoid many to many relationship in Power BI. Okay. Next is ambiguity in aggregations. So aggregations such as sum, average, etc., can become ambiguous when there are multiple related records. Power BI may not be able to determine which record to aggregate. Okay. Why this is happening? Because we have created many to many relationship between the tables, right? So this is the issue that is called as the ambiguity and aggregations. Okay. Next is performance impact. This is the most important issue that we will face if we will keep the many to many relationship between the tables. That is, here you can see many to many relationships have a performance impact, particularly with the large data set. Okay, as Power BI has to navigate through potentially complex relationship to pass the data. Okay, that's why we can say if we will keep the many to many relationship between the two tables in Power BI, then we can face we can face the performance impact. Okay, so we should always try to remove the many to many relationship and we should keep it as one to many or one to one relationship. Okay, then the next issue that we can face is DEX measure and calculations. It means when working with many to many relationship, you may need to create more complex DEX measures and calculations to handle the ambiguous and provide accurate result. Okay, so these are the common issues that we can face if we will keep the many to many relationship between two tables during creating of the data modeling in Power BI. Okay, so how can we resolve all this issue? So to resolve all this issue in Power BI, one common approach to handle many to many relationship is to introduce a breeze table or a junction table that resolve the many to many relationship in Power BI. Okay, so if you don't know how to create this breeze table, then you can watch my video in my playlist of this Power BI. Okay, and I have given the link of that video in the description sections, so you can also watch that from there. All right, so these are the common issues that we can face if you will keep many to many relationship between two tables in data modeling during creating of the Power BI report. Okay, so let's see the questions. So as you can see here, this is the question. Suppose we have a report called as the report one and we publish that report one in workspace one okay and that report one has two visualizations visualizations one and visualizations two all right same way suppose we have a report called as the report two and we publish that report two in workspace two all right and that report two has two visualizations that is visualizations one and visualizations two all right now we have clicked on the pin icon of the visualizations one of report one which is available in the workspace one all right and created a dashboard one got it and add the visualizations one of the report one into the dashboard one now can we pin the visualizations one of report two 
which is available in the workspace 2 into the dashboard 1. I know this question is a little bit lengthy and believe me guys from the answer of this particular questions the interviewer will definitely get satisfied okay so if you are not able to understand what i am telling then just read this question again and again you will definitely get the question okay so the answer of the question is no we can't pin the visualizations one of report two which is available in the workspace two into the dashboard one why it is because if we will publish the report one into the workspace one then its limit is within the workspace one only it means we can pin the visualization of the report one into the dashboard one because dashboard one is only within the workspace one okay so we can pin the visualizations one of report one only into the dashboard one which is available in the workspace one okay and in the same way if we will publish the report two into the workspace two then its limit is within the workspace two only it means we can pin the visualization of the report 2 into the dashboard 2 which is created within the workspace 2 okay so we can pin the visualizations 1 of report 2 only into the dashboard 2 because that is available within the workspace 2 okay that's why we can't pin the visualizations 1 of report 2 into the dashboard 1 because dashboard 1 is in workspace 1 Whereas, visualizations 1 of the report 2 is in the workspace 2. That's why we can't pin the visualizations 1 of the report 2 into the dashboard 1. Got it? So, still if you are facing the problem to understand the answer of these questions, then you have to do it practically. Then only you can understand. Okay? But this video is all about only for the interview questions. So, I am not explaining it practically here but maybe in the near future i will definitely create a video for all of you where i can explain all these things practically okay i hope this video is more helpful for all of you and if you like this video please don't forget to share subscribe and like our channel take care bye bye